Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the McLaren Return to Glory. This one is a big one because we have a contract renewal status to take care of in this episode. And yeah, we're here for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Now before we jump into this part of, I guess a crucial part of the season, we're going to talk about the previous episode at Silverstone. So spoiler warning, go check it out as always, link in the top right of your screen. But yeah, Silverstone. Um, a home Grand Prix for myself and Lando and the team and simply put it was a disaster we both got into trouble and we finished out the points and literally so so far away and it was a real shame we basically yeah just ruined our home Grand Prix which was really unfortunate although to be fair I don't think I had great pace around there so I'm looking to bounce back now first things first is the contract and luckily McLaren have agreed for the mid-level you know contract so not super high risk not super low and they're happy to go kind of halfway and meet me there so yeah with that done we're going to go for some upgrades we purchased uh, an upgrade for the front downforce on the aero side of things which is a major we then got two upgrades one from mercedes-benz and another for the energy store and we're going to basically try to move forward at the moment we do have a couple of restrictions in terms of facilities i can't actually do a lot more upgrades on aero or chassis right now so i'm waiting on mclaren to you know bring those upgrades in so for now we're doing the best we can but we are starting to slip away a little bit especially now if you look at Haas and williams bringing huge upgrade packages this weekend so we're no longer the fifth best team and we slip back down to seventh as yeah other teams around us are improving and also aston martin closing the gap to the top three so yeah, it's all kind of opening back up again in that midfield battle and there's a gap now to Aston Martin to be fair, quite a big gap. So yeah, we're going to jump into practice and overcast conditions but no rain at any point and the car felt pretty good, I'm not going to lie. We seem to have a good setup, good balance around here and the car's working re reasonably well, relatively well. So yeah, we finished our run, we went back to the pits, you can see the pace was getting better and better each lap, albeit using a bit more ERS. Fuel also pretty decent, so overall balance is good and wear levels are looking pretty good, so that's always a good sign. We uh, picked up a bunch of development boosts, of course, as always, after practice, although we are starting to run out of, you know, productive boosts. We're basically just getting a bunch of durability ones, which aren't exactly productive in terms of what we want to aim for. We do level up on driver acclaim to level 8, and we can now jump into qualifying here at Hungary, and we're going to put the pace to the test and see if it is legit or will the AI unsurprisingly as it does happen a lot in these games find another level of pace that i can't quite match so here we go q1 time this was the start of my first time lap and i won't lie the extra horsepower caught me off guard we completely outbroke ourselves onto the marbles ran way too wide and yeah that was a pretty big time loss already later on in the lap heading through the end of second two i had a bit of a moment through the fast right hander and now out of the final corner, we're going to close out the first time lap with a 117.4, pretty much a 0.5, and we go P13. So nothing to really rave about on that first lap. I then, as always, went for a cool down lap and then a second push as we were fueled for two laps. And we're going to see if we can basically correct those small errors and find some time. So turn one, braking just before the 50, down a third gear, staying nice and tight. And this time you can see we find the lap time. DRS open as we make our way down to turn two. Brake just before the 50. The, ball, the, the brake marker ball is on the left, so that's your reference. And then make sure you get the power down as soon as possible out of turn three. Now then, sector two, over the blind crest. Try to get the inside curb, although we take a bit too much bottom out. Run wide. We don't invalidate, but we lose time. So that's probably why the game didn't invalidate our lap time. So not exactly ideal. Making our way into the chicane though, over the curbs, we do find a bit of time through there in third gear. And now just trying to hook up these long swooping corners in fourth gear as we actually find a pretty decent amount of time to be fair through there. Now through the fast right, a little bit of understeer. I didn't quite catch the inside curb, but we still found time as we carried some you know, better corner speed and didn't have any oversteer. And we also now that braking zone as we're now currently four tenths up, making our way into the final two corners. This could be good enough as we now make our way into the final corner, trying to stay tight, dipping down to third gear to get a bit more rotation. And now DRS open up to the line as it's a half a second improvement. And we drop into a 16.999 and into P9, which is much more like it. As you can see, 
we're safe right now by about three and a bit tenths at the moment. If you look at Sonoda, it's over three tenths, it's nearly four tenths. So I'm going to take a chance and not go out. And we just get away with it. We was very lucky to not get eliminated. We made it through by eight one thousandth of a second over Valtteri Bottas. So the margins extremely fine, but it worked out and we save a set of tires, which is the ultimate goal. So into Q2, as you can see, fresh set of tires on. And we know from that previous qualifying session, the 117 dead is the benchmark baseline for this first run. So up to the start finish and we say 17-1. However, we're last and by a long way, the AI found a big chunk of time in Q2 and they actually really stepped up the pace. So I, again, went for a second push lap on that same run and we did find some time to be fair. A couple of tenths making our way into the final corner and this should get us below the 17s and this should be our best lap of the weekend so far as we cross the line and set a 16.9, marginally faster than our Q1 lap time as we go P13. So. Yeah, not exactly ideal. Um, matching lap times, but not really finding time. And the AI are finding time, so that's not a good sign. Um, right now, we're looking at about just over two tenths we need to find to try and get through. So this is it. The final run in qualifying two. Can we get into Q3 and you know bounce back after that poor qualifying in Silverstone? Here we go. DRS open, down to turn one. Spot the 50 and break just before it. Down to third gear. Try and stay tight. I don't do too badly there. The exit, though, really good as we short shift the fourth and get some really clean traction. Turn two break at the 50 again. Down a third gear. Important traction zone here again as you, you know, kind of floor it at the end of third gear into fourth. And you want to try and get that drive. Now then, over the left kink. This time, not bottoming out, keeping it within track limits and finding a big chunk of time. Also, a bit more time found there through the long right-hander of turn five. As we head into the chicane, third gear, clipping the curbs a little bit deep. I overcommitted and lost a bit of time on the exit as I carried a bit too much speed in the first part. Although we absolutely nailed these swooping corners in sector two. And for good measure, we now, as we clip the inside curb, the fast right-hander to close out the middle sector. And right now, we're up by a couple of tenths. So this is looking very good. Into sector three then, the 90 degree right on the money. And now the final two corners here, staying nice and tight, power down as soon as possible. And now just one corner to go. And we go in super early to try and find some lap time, which we managed to achieve. DRS open, up to the line. And it is a big improvement. It's a 16-4. And I was very happy with that. That was pretty much near perfect besides the chicane. However, it's not enough. Unfortunately, we're out in Q2, in P12. And in the end, we actually got knocked out by over a tenth and a half. So I'm not too sure... If I could have got through, it would have been really close on an absolutely perfect lap. I know there was about half a tenth, maybe a tenth in that chicane if we'd taken a bit of a different line. But I don't think I would have had enough to get through. So to be fair, I'm not too mad about it because we pretty much maximized what we had in terms of pace. So yeah, Lando in P8 into Q3. And it seems like unlike Silverstone, we have a bit more pace here. And we're a bit more competitive. So, yeah, we'll see if there's any grip penalties. But for now, it's looking pretty decent. And we've got a good shot against some decent points here this weekend. So, yeah, guys, qualifying done. Let's move into the main event. And let's try and bounce back after that very poor British Grand Prix. It's race day in Budapest as we get ready for another round of Formula One action. We're not expecting too many retirements at this circuit. There are plenty of current and former drivers with flawless finish rates here. In particular, Ralph Schumacher, who made it across the line in all 10 of his Hungarian Grand Prix starts. 14 corners then for our drivers to navigate at the 2.7 mile Hungaro rig today. It's six lefts and eight rights around a lap here with average speeds in the region of 120 miles per hour. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Russell, Sainz, Hamilton, Perez, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Ocon, Stroll, Martinez, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Magnussen, Bottas, Albon, 
Joe, De Vries, Sargent, and Pierre Gasly picks up the final grid slot. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? And joining me again for the race today, Natalie Pinkham. Let's talk about Martinez. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within the team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that has definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. So this one should be an interesting race because Hungary is notoriously difficult to overtake. It's not an easy circuit for it. However, strategy will be key. Pit stop phase will be key. So for this one, I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm going to trust the game's strategy. So I'm actually going to start on the soft tire, which is what the game is advising. And then mediums in the second stint. That could change to a hard tire, depending on if I feel like we've got tire wear trouble. But I'm going to start on the soft. I'm going to give it a go and see if we can get aggressive and gain some places off the line. It worked pretty well in Spain a few races ago, so I want to try and give it a shot. Fuel-wise, I'm going for point 0.8. I don't want to have any trouble on fuel because it's going to be one of the races where we're going to be managing tyres, so I don't want to manage fuel as well at the same time. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. It should be fun. Down below, guys, as always, a prediction. Can we bounce back after Silverstone? And yeah, leave a like on the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps me out, and let's get into it. Right then, here we go. The lights are on. Soft tyres ready. Lando with a horrible start. We're accumulating somewhere on the MG UK. To manage this, we're going to need to lower our ERS deployment mode. Going to go around the outside here. Lots of space. What a start this is. This is excellent. Challenging Hamilton here inside of turn two. Alonso a bit slow there to get on the power, but we make a move and we're going to challenge Fernando. Although I can't quite get side by side. Hamilton looking to go back through. Left plenty of space on the inside there. Soft tyre working well. This was a good choice. Now the question is, will the tyre hold up? That's the, that's the, the big issue now. We've, we've had that initial benefit, but now can we make it work? Not ideal that Alonso's P5, I will admit. Of course, Aston Martin picked up some big points in Silverstone. That was a big shift in our Constructors' battles. Hamilton goes through. I don't really want to battle him too heavy, to be fair. I will let him go, probably, once I feel like I can't hold on any longer. But for now, we're going to try and hold position. Probably going to go for a soft hard tyre strap, realistically. Just, you know, cash in, use the soft, gain the places and then box and keep track position for the rest of the race. So right now speed seems actually not too bad. A little bit on the lower side, but it's manageable. We can somewhat defend. So yeah, good, great start actually. Right, let's try and keep it going. Well, so far we're hanging in there. This is actually surprisingly decent. We'll see if we can still hold on. But yeah, I should now lower their engine mode a little bit on this next lap. Hamilton lurking, but not able to get it by just yet. We'll hold on for a bit longer. I'm not going to have DRS on Alonso, which is a bit of a shame. I haven't lost too much time, but he's just pulled away enough. I'm not going to fight Lewis. This is the best way to keep our race efficient. Also, if you look at the minimap, there's been a bit of um, a breakaway. So Lando's the end of this train. And then there's a gap to basically our competitors. So it's important that we try and keep that gap. That will be valuable for us. We're going to start suffering now on tyres though a little bit. Right then, we're a long way away from DRS now. So realistically, Checo will go by without any obstructions. Again, we've just got to try and be efficient here, minimise time loss and battling. So I won't put up a fight against Checo. He should breeze past. There we go. Lando behind. I also won't fight him too hard. As it is my teammate, and I can probably follow him quite easily. So let's try and stick with Checo for now. No DRS on Checo, so Lando will now go by. My front left is actually getting a bit hot. This is the first time I've had this in this game. So we're experiencing some tire temp issues. So another reason why the hard tire will probably be a pretty nice tire to drive on, to be honest. I know there's very little tire wear on that one. So just going to try and extend this stint out as long as I can. And then I'll pit once I feel like 
it's worth it. First warning. That's okay, we'll keep it under control. Okay, stroll up to P10. She's the next threat. Because realistically, the Aston Martin is faster, so he should be able to catch. So we're basically racing stroll today to try and keep him behind. Well then, no DRS on Lando. So we might start taking some pain now. Gonna have to try and decide when to pit. Tires are really starting to go now on this lap. I can feel it. I might do just one more lap. But I don't want to give Stroll really DRS, so I'll try and hold on one more if I can and then box. Here we go then. I don't want to give Lance DRS. So hopefully we can keep the gap before we enter the pit entry. I think it should be okay. I think Lance will get DRS. Right. Onto the hard tires then. Original pistol lap was lap 15, but that was from the medium. This is for the hard tire, so we should be able to get to the end from here. Usually the hard tire has pretty low wear around this track anyway, you can drive it all day. I could be wrong though, maybe things are different in this game, who knows. Another 2.2, the crew absolutely on point. We're going to rejoin, basically last, so clean air. And we're free to push, so let's get this tire up to speed. Pit strategy complete. See these tires through to the end now. Let's get to work. Let's see if we have some decent pace on this and basically just try and match our lap times so that will keep us in that little pocket between Lando and Stroll. Possibly even undercut Lando to be fair, depending on our pace. Looks like all those cars on softs are going to stay out and probably go for the medium tyre, so I could be on my own in terms of this strategy, so we'll see if it works out or not. Right then, talk about an absolute traffic jam. We're going to be on the back of this next lap, so hopefully cars start to pit and get out of the way. Right now, no one's pitting, but next lap should be a scheduled pit stop lap. We're going to arrive and meet this train in a couple of corners time. Right now, this is going to be some pretty big time loss. I'm going to take the hit on the chin and stay in line. Basically charge the battery while I'm here and also just give the tires a slight break. Uh, so I've been pushing. I've been running faster than Lando to the point where I may have actually got within his undercut window, but We'll fall in line and just basically see if some of these cars pit and get out of my way. Obviously we're going to have to pass some of them as they can't all pit at the same time. So let's see. This train should empty out. And there we go. So we can now pass Sergeant. This is why we saved the battery so we can make some progress. There we go. Battles ahead. May even be able to get Pierre here, who has a bit of a moment. He's on a medium, so he won't be as bad on tyres. Yellow flag, middle sector. Bit of a moment there, but we get the cut back on Gasly as signs retires. Nice move there on Pierre. Had to go through. Ocon's on hard, so he won't be too slow, but caution, caution. the Vries is basically a mobile chicane. Okay, be aware, there's an incident in the next part of the track. No overtaking through the yellow flags. Yellow flag zone. Can't overtake. Okay, clear. The Vries is pitting his lap anyway, but not going to waste any time. Let's try and get within Ocon's DRS if we can. That would be a nice... Little boost. There we go. Ocon has a moment. Can I maybe launch one into turn one? No cars on pit exit, so we're free to use the inside. Ocon moves in the braking, but it's not going to stop me. And we're through. So just like that, we're P10 again. And no more stops this race in principle, so just got to drive now. We'll try and get the batteries charged up and just basically cruise. The car feels great on these tyres, very happy with the balance right now. Right then, so Lando's in. One thing I've clocked, we're already P10, so we could actually two-stop if we wanted to. That option is available. So we've got soft tyres, so maybe if I feel we might be struggling a bit later on, I might cut this stint short and go for a set of softs, as that might give us 
a late race push because the undercut or just driving on fresh tyres is so much more powerful. You can see that we've cleared Lando by a long way, even with traffic and overtakes. So, yeah, fresh tyres makes a huge difference. P8 right now, which is the main thing. Still a few cars left to pit, I believe, but this is great. And there we go, Lance Stroll in the pit lane, the last car to box. And that's the number of racing today. Lando has got DRS on me, but he's not close enough to pass just yet. I'll probably let him go if it's an easy pass. Well then, we're going to let Lando go. We're making good headway right now, great pace. And Perez pits again, which is interesting, or pits for the first time. I can't quite tell. No, he pits for the first time. He started on cars, didn't he? So he'll be just up the road. But P7, P8 is pretty much the best we can hope for this race. Alonso is a long way up the road. So we're just going to basically let Lando cook and we'll try and follow. Both Alfa Romeo's are blocking Stroll, so he's making no progress. And yeah, we'll see if the two-stop does become a viable option later on in this race. Joe has to stop again. Lando's pushing like crazy right now. Insane pace from Lando on this lap. I mean, I feel very happy on these tyres, but Lando's got another gear. My God, he's flying. So there goes the RS. <laughs> thought I would have kept up quite easily, but clearly not. So we're pulling away from Joe and Bottas. That's all that matters right now. Okay, now the AI is starting to cook. So Lando's really, really pushing Bottas now. Also closing in quite easily. Hopefully, tyre wear levels should even out as we're on a hard and Bottas is on a medium. So hopefully by the time he arrives, he will be struggling. Stroll is right on the back of Joe and is now going to pass as Joe pits. Well, never mind actually. It's like to know it at first. So it's at first and then Bottas afterwards, but Stroll is on the hunt. Right then, Bottas has DRS and the two-stop is now out the window. Other cars behind are making progress, especially the Haas cars, so I can no longer two-stop. I'm not um, going to be able to get that back. So this is it now. We're committing to this strategy. Ten laps to go and we're going to have to put on a defensive show here because I know once we get overtaken, we can't get back through. So I'm going to have to be smart with how I use my battery here. Oh dear. That really isn't a good sign. Bottas is right there. I've got battery though to defend, but we can hold on for now. I don't know how long it's going to last. Stroll has joined the party as well. Ideally, a bit of a scrap between Bottas and Stroll would be the perfect remedy here, but hoping that Stroll holds on the 10th place and doesn't actually move to 9th and gain a couple of points more. Bottas under pressure from Stroll. This is exactly what we want. Bottas didn't really put any pressure on me on that lap, so let's hope these two can scrap for a bit. That's exactly what we want, just them two battling away. Right then, big pressure from Stroll, who has got the bit between his teeth and just looking to pass. I'm make sure the exit is on the money, which it is, but Stroll is right there. Our straight on speed though is very good with the battery on. Looking full stroll to the outside here, that's no threat. We can do this all day. It's only if he gets a really good exit and a really good run. Luckily there, he got a bad exit like myself, so we got away with that one. So uh, yeah, let's see where we're going. I'm feeling pretty comfortable right now, I can hold on to this. Stroll's going to be there the whole time. He's not going to have any tyre trouble as he's on a much fresher hard tyre than me. So he's going to be, you know, with the advantage the whole time. Bottas now is on a struggle and can't keep up. But a couple of good runs though, and good exits. Stroll trying again here. Hamilton battling Alonso, hopefully he can get the better of him. I've broke myself. Oh, getting on the anchors though, nice and late. Beautiful exit there, that was on the money. I can manage with this. I just hope I can cope when AI deploy full power mode in the last lap and a half or so. Oh dear, mistake. Pressure on from Stroll. But we managed to defend. Done the same mistake as qualifying there, just cut too much. Bottomed out, ran wide. Stroll's a bit closer this time. Gonna completely cut off the inside line. We are so good on the brakes. And I know I can get this exit every single time. Stroll again trying, but no way through. This is great. Ministry of Defense so far. Right then, Hamilton overtakes Alonso on the last lap. Can we keep Stroll behind? This is going to be his last chance, pretty much. As he now goes full power mode. So this is going to be very tough to defend from. 
Luckily, we've got plenty of charge, but Stroll is right there. Look at the difference this time as he gets to power down. He's pulling. We're not going to give up, though. We're going to send it up the inside on the brakes. Lots of marbles, leaving space. And we stay in front. Stroll unable to go around the outside. Not over yet, though. He's going to be in full power, so he's going to be a constant nuisance this entire last lap. So we're going to have to use power in all the key areas. But I think we've got it under control, barring any mistakes. Just got to keep it nice and tidy now. This could be a chance right here if I don't nail this exit. Yep. He's right there, but we cover off the inside as Leclerc wins. Just got to get through this next kind of mini straight after this fast right-hander. I've got to make sure the exit is good out of here. That's good. Power down super early. Stroll closing. But we just cover off the inside. Make our car nice and wide. And that should do it. So the strategy pays off. Sly on the soft tire, jumping the positions. And we leapfrog our way into the points. And that is a very good P7, P8. Double points finish to bounce back after a torrid Silverstone race. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. It's victory in Budapest then, and what a victory it is after an incredible Grand Prix. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I want to know if that was as easy as it looked. An absolute masterclass today. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix, and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. Right then, happy with that. Decent race, decent result, and decent points haul. And pretty much, we tie Aston Martin for points brought in this race. So very happy with that. As we are currently going for a bit of a phase, you know, we're a bit off the back foot, uh, not really getting the upgrades on the way other teams are. So we're going to have to try and bounce back. Leclerc, though, the winner ahead of George in very fine, fine margins there for the win. Verstappen third, Perez recovers to fourth, Hamilton fifth ahead of Alonso. Double points finished, both cars in the top eight ahead of Stroll and Bottas. Standings then, let's have a look at them. So drivers were eighth right now and still keeping a nice lead over Lando of 13 points. Alonso, 29 points up the road. And uh, that's going to be a big gap to cut back on. But hey-ho, you never know. Things might turn around later on in the season. Constructors, though, as you can see, the gap still remains at five points to Aston Martin. So nothing gained, nothing lost in this one, guys. So, yeah, light is doing the link. It's getting dark. And they need to try and get this video edited in time. So, yeah, like, subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And as always, a big shout out to the members for supporting the channel. Check out the videos on screen if you haven't seen them. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. And let's go back from me.